Now, we're not talking about the type of like pain that's like abusive, not that kind of stuff. We don't condone that type of stuff. We're talking about the general pain we all experience in relationships. This, the pain, pain is there for a reason. It's not there to traumatize you. Pain is there to show you what's important, what you have to focus, and what you can and cannot do. And these things naturally makes people fall in love with you. Without the pain, there cannot be pleasure. So we're gonna be talking about how to give them the right amount of pain that makes them fall in love with you, okay? Um, and again, if you're gonna be using this to hurt people on purpose, then I, you know, I don't know what you believe, but I believe in karma. And I think that if you do this type of stuff, you you will, karma eventually is gonna get back to you. It's just that simple, okay? Um, now, if you guys ever, ever wanna check more of this type of content out, you guys can check out my Patreon right here, as you guys can see, let me show you guys. Um, because in my Patreon, you guys can watch these types of videos, a bunch of different Robert Green Book Club videos. You guys can watch it by being members of the Patreon, okay? Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be uploading this full video. It's going to be like around, it's going to be like an hour. I may, I may, I think I have to upload part two, right? Of this one? Yeah, actually, I got to upload part two of this one, right? But anyways, yeah, so we're going to be posting a longer version of this one if you guys are interested, okay? So let's begin with this and because this is um, this is one of those chapters that a lot of people have a hard time applying. And the reason why people have a hard time applying this chapter is because they're not used to thinking about love this way. It's taboo. Truth is, is that you always end up falling in love with people who kind of creates a little bit of stress. We're not talking about debilitating stress like you know like just like stress you have you stress which is healthy for you and then you have like chronic stress which is not good this is that kind of a healthy pain the kind of healthy pain that allows a child to appreciate their parents the type of healthy pain that allows a lover who who took it for granted to realize that you know what you're worth more these things are important people do not see this as a negative as a negative okay and if you do this as a way to manipulate people to gaslight people that's when karma is going to get you all right so let's begin with this and if you guys want to join the robert green book club it's, it starts at five bucks a month one inflation driven cup of coffee okay in new york city so with just that you guys can support this movement where i'm trying to help people to empower themselves and a lot of people have benefited from those types of videos so i would like for you to actually share the wealth and show other people um, and give them that liberation from their from their selves if that makes any sense let's continue 20. mix pleasure with pain almost everyone is more or less polite we learn early on not to tell people what we really think of them. We smile at their jokes, act interested in their stories and problems. It is the only way to live with them. Eventually, this becomes a habit. We are nice even when it isn't really necessary. We try to please other people to not step on their toes, to avoid disagreements and conflict. Niceness in seduction, however, though it may at first draw someone to you, it is soothing and comforting soon loses all effect just like too much harshness makes people resentful and hate you too much niceness all niceness also has that effect you have you guys have to see the the, the nice and the, and the and the cruelty as a type of dish you have your warm you have your warm dish and your cold dish you have the crunchy part of a dish and then you have the soft part of the dish. You have the, the salty part and the sweet part. This is too much salt. It's not good in a dish. Too much sweetness, it's not good. Right? Imagine something sweet. You want a little bit of saltiness in that sweetness. Right? That's how you have to see it. You know? And I understand people watch this and they feel bad. You know? Because I, I kind of get it. I also get a little uncomfortable with it. But if, if you really pay attention, this is what people actually, this is what is the catalyst to make people realize that they like you. Being too nice can literally push the target away from you. Erotic feeling depends on the creation of tension. Without tension, without anxiety and suspense, there can be no feeling of release, of true pleasure and joy. It is your task to create that tension in the target. 
to stimulate feelings of anxiety and to lead them to and fro so that the culmination of the seduction has real weight and intensity. Damn, okay. So rid yourself of your nasty habit of avoiding conflict, which is in any case unnatural. You are most often nice not out of your own inner goodness, but out of fear of displeasing, out of in insecurity. Now look, he says rid yourself of your aversion to avoid conflict, right? Now, notice this, right? This is this is the part that I'm telling you that this is not bad, okay? Oh my god, he has a hell he has a he has a fucking guilty conscience. <laughs> um, is that these conflicts naturally arise? I re I remember one time this girl, her and her friend, she came out. They came over and we made food. Right? It was it was it was during the pandemic, and she and her friend came and I cooked for them. Right? No, they cooked for me in the morning, and it was it was just friends. They were just visiting, and they left the dishes dirty. And I'm like, okay, all right. I mean, I guess they cooked, all right. The next time that happened, they I cooked, and I left the dishes. They left, they didn't wash the dishes. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? You know, what happened? I decided to keep it to myself. I didn't say nothing, right? Now, this is where I, this is what I mean, right? These things are little things, okay? I know it's little, but it's important to tell people, hey man, wash the dishes, okay? If you clean, if I cook for you, I expect you to wash the dishes. I didn't do that because I felt uncomfortable. I felt, you know, I didn't want to make a scene. And it wasn't going to be a scene, but this is what he's talking about. These are things that would definitely hurt their feelings. These are uncomfortable conversations it may not be it may not last long it might just be a few seconds and it's over but those are things that most people don't want to do and this could have inflicted some pain a little awkwardness hey, i'm so sorry i didn't mean to next time i'll make i'll make sure to do that and you might not think it's big but this does hurt a person's feelings you mentioning their mistakes it does hurt a person's feelings so this is why this strategy is so important because this is not telling you to go out here and be a bunch of terminators causing problems. No. What this is saying is that what I am trying to tell you is that conflict will arise. Don't be afraid to hurt them in the process of, of that conflict. Sometimes you got to call people out on, the, uh, on their behavior and you might think that they might, they might not forgive you for hurting them. They might not forgive you for calling, you for calling them out. First of all, if they don't, red flag, walk away. And two, they will, most likely they'll forgive you. And the rec reconciliation of forgiveness, the reconciliation is even more pleasurable. You, you know what I'm saying? I I, I, can't, I, I should have done that. I should have called it up, called them out on it. In the long run, it wasn't a big deal, right? But I'm saying that there are, life offers you moments to apply this, and you'll notice that the bosses who rarely give out praise, but also the bosses who are harsh but also really nice to their co to their under underlings they tend to have more more employees who are loyal i i talked about it in the video in my in, in my last video about that but i don't want to get too ahead go beyond that fear and you suddenly have options the freedom to create pain then magically dissolve it your seductive powers will increase tenfold People will be less upset by your hurtful actions than you might imagine. In the world today, we often feel starved for experience. We crave emotion, even if it is negative. The pain you cause your targets then is bracing. It makes them feel more alive. They have something to complain about. They get to play the victim. As a result, once you have turned the pain into pleasure, they will readily forgive you. Stir up their jealousy, make them feel insecure, and the validation you later give their ego by preferring them over their rivals is doubly delightful. But that's the thing, is that people are just more forgiven than we like to imagine. You know, people are more forgiven. Um, you can make somebody feel jealous and they'll act, they'll, they're going to act like, you know what, you made me feel jealous, I'm leaving, I've never seen you again. What people who are on the other end tend to always notice is that they end up coming back to you. 
And this is not a an encouragement to use this to hurt people. This is an encouragement to don't avoid conflict. You're not going to lose them. They're not going to leave. They're just going to respect you more. You know? They, they, they do something that's irking you a little bit, call them out on it. Be a little harsh. You know, be, be, be a little straightforward. Be very straightforward. Show them another side to your personality. Use those moments of when they make mistakes, which everyone will, and in which you will make mistakes, as a way to show people your fangs. And also, the moments when you make mistakes, use those moments to show that you're humble, to show that you're you're as willing to dish it out and also equally as willing to take it, you know? Um, and, and, and these things do have a powerful effect. And I can promise you, the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because every single person has had very a lot of opportunities to apply this. And they didn't do it because they were afraid. They think that pain, little moments of conflicts of you calling people out makes them makes them resentful they, or they might leave you. What happens is that their self-esteem for that moment lowers because they disappointed you. It's just human nature. And they did but now you're calling them out on it. And then what you do is after you do that, then you treat them, you go a little bit out of your way to be a little nicer, right? To soothe them, make them feel good. Or even even you say, thank you for, for he- thank you for hearing me out. Let's do this as a reward, right? Those things will solidify a, a not an emotion, but it'll, it'll create that, that that pattern that we're talking about makes it pain and pleasure pain and pleasure it's like when when we mess up with our parents right we make mistakes with our parents what tends to happen is that when we make mistakes they tend to punish us but then after the punishment like a freaking psycho they buy us ice cream right <laughs> or or even like when my mom used to get mad at me you know, let's just say I I came home late, whatever. She'll be mad at me, and it seemed like she's about to. I should, it seemed like I should call the cops on her ass. But then after she tells me everything, then she'll say, "There's food for you in the dinner. There's food for you in the kitchen." Right? That pain and pleasure creates a bond because what it, what that says is that only someone who I really like, only someone who I feel like it's family. Do we do we go through that cycle of pain and pleasure? Because families go through this cycle a lot. They're they're not afraid. You know, you know what I'm saying. Most family are not afraid to call them out, call the other family member out on bullshit. But they also equally have great moments, and that's what strength is the bond. That's why friends who are not able to have these moments of conflict, who are too who are too on the acquaintance side, they, they never really develop that bond with each other because pain and pleasure which comes in the, conf- in, in, in the form of conflict, you and your friends, you having arguments with your friends. Um, you, even when I was a kid, I used to fight with my friends and then the next day it would be cool. You know, Those types of, of pain and pleasure that you guys have to go, that you guys go through is what creates and strengthens a bond. But if you're, if, you're, if you're not able to call out your friend on his bullshit, to have arguments, or even to have days that you don't even talk, right? And then a few, and then a few weeks later, you reconciliate. If you can't do that, you're not. You guys are not real friends. I have a friend, Will. Right? We fought one time, and we didn't talk for I don't know, like a year or two, something like that. <laughs> we would. <laughs> I didn't hate the guy, man. We was just, it was just ego. You know what I'm saying? We we would hang out with, with our friend Stevie, and like <laughs> we would talk between Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> we would never we would have address each other but we would say hey Stevie at one point I was like y'all man y'all gotta fucking stop this shit man <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are always putting me in between I don't know what happened something happened where we just started talking again right but that's because you're friends you know what I'm saying only friends can do that if you guys are not really friends moments of conflict will, will mean the end you have you have to be able to Tell your friend to go fuck yourself. Don't talk to me. You you have to be able to say, dude, what the fuck was that about? You 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 gotta be able to 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 hurt them. And you get what I'm saying? And 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 still, they gotta be able to hurt you. And at the same time, you're still gonna be there. That's what creates that bond, you know. Um, and and you gotta you gotta find a way to get to this point. Not quickly, but try to get to to this point. Um. There's so many ways to do that, but 
Remember, you have more to fear by boring your targets than by shaking them up. Wounding people binds them to you more deeply than kindness. Create tension so you can release it. Yeah, it's like if you... The best time to have to have a fight is before Valentine's Day. You know, before the your anniversary, right? Um, those things are important, man. Um, it, it, it's There's something conflict brings people together. That's just how that works. Wars bring people together and conflict brings people together. If you and somebody... Somebody hurts you. That conflict, if you if you guys work on it, will bring you together. Like, like even married couples have been together for a long time. They'll tell you that usually the best moments come after a, after a conflict, and that's why conflict resolution is so important. If you if you if you don't have conflict resolution, you can't really get to this point where you guys can inflict pain on each other. Not in an evil way, but through just the natural progression of a relationship. Motherfucker, any, any motherfuckers who say they don't, that this never happens, then I, I want to meet you, Jesus, whoever you are, right? Because I always have the angel, the angel commenters who, who say that none of the shit that I say, that say that they're not fucking humans, you know, that, that confess that they're terminators. Anyways, um, conflict resolution is very important for this, but if, if you never... You know, if you if like, for example, it's like it's like hurting someone and then apologizing for it, right? Okay, if you do that a lot, then you got a problem, right? But generally speaking, the more negative things happen when you try to not have conflict than when you have conflict. I just believe that testing the relationship by allowing conflict and 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 and, and those types of things to arise. Tests of your relationship, it just does. You know, I sound toxic right now. I mean, I'm, I'm telling people, you know, it's, it's important. It's important to fight, but yes, it is because you don't really know how much they really love you by when there's only peace time. You know who's really about you when there's problems. When you guys are arguing and you guys fight, that's how you know this person's real character. And that's why I'm telling you, if you want the, if you want to be able to inflict pain and 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 provide pleasure, you also have to. Be a willing participant in that too. You know? You also, if they hurt, if they if you mess up and they pull away, that that means that you're not gonna be doing that strategy all. Oh, oh, now they're pulling away after I fucked up. How do I Father Alex, how do I how do I get them back? No, you gotta go back to them. You gotta go back to them and humble yourself to them. Give them that pleasure also. It's not just about you. Then when that happens, then when it's hurt, when it's your when it's their turn, boom, and that. And and, and 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 for me, it's all about not holding grudges, being being more than happy to admit your mistakes. Because at the least, think about it from this perspective: it just makes them like you more, you know. So, so you go back to someone who, when you if if you made a mistake, it's okay to double text them when you're the one that fucked up. So that then when it's their turn and they fuck up, then they'll also do the same thing, you know? But if you develop an ego and you don't chase and you don't, you don't humble yourself when you make a mistake, then when it's their turn, they're going to marry you, you know? So it's kind of like, that's how that works. If you need inspiration, find the part of the target that most irritates you and use it as a springboard for some therapeutic conflict. The more real your cruelty, the more effective it is. So he's talking about criticism. We all have things that we don't like about ourselves. And if you criticize someone about something that they know they have a flaw in and you call them out on it, then that's a really good way to do it. For example, being late on a date. An example of that is a girl that I was dating who was late a lot, right? I literally stopped going out with her after like a third, after third or fourth date. She was like 30, 40 minutes late. And I'm like, look, man, I'm leaving. I know you're Mexican, but this is, I'm not, if this is how it is, then I'm moving to Cuba, girl. I, I'm not dealing with this shit, you know? And she never wanted to be on time. And so I left. Did she come back? No, she didn't. Right? So the conflict, this could have inflicted pain and it, it didn't hurt her. So the inflicting pain is not just about making them um, um, feel the pain and pleasure, but it also reveals how much they actually like you. You know what I'm saying? 
In 1818, the French writer Stendhal, then living in Milan, met the Countess Matilda Viscontini. For him, it was... We're going to finish this um, by tomorrow. So if you guys want to become part of the Robert Green Book Club to get these types of videos, click on the description down below where it says become, become a member. Um, you guys can see this right here. Um, I'm going to put it up for you guys. Boom, boom. Um, let me show you the memberships. Um, you guys, so as you guys can hear for five a month, there you go. You guys can get access to the the Robert Green Book Club videos, um, and then for ten dollars a month, you get you get the audio of the Robert Green Book Club video, and you guys can ask me a question. I gotta I gotta put that. Um, you guys can ask me one question per month by being a um, part of this, and then you got you have the like a boss with this one. You guys can have access to the Robert Green Book Club, um, and you guys can ask me two questions. It's two questions, people. I don't know why I put that, why I sound so angry. Only 100 words or less, right? And then the Mindful Master, you get all those benefits plus a drawing. And that's all for five hours a month. And what you guys can do, you guys can, with this, you guys can support me because with this, I'm trying to help people out. You know, I'm trying to give people a Machiavellian spirituality per se, where you guys learn about spirituality, but also you guys have a, Machiav have a Machiavellian side, not evil, but you're willing to play a little dirty, spiritual dirty warfare, if that makes any sense. But it is true. There's too many passive spiritual people. And I believe this message will invigorate people to become stronger, to not get manipulated, to not join crazy cults, not that kind of stuff. So click in the description down below to support that, to help people out. And if you guys have a family member that you believe could use this message in their life, this empowering message, just send them to this to these videos and I'll see you guys there or else I'm gonna have to close the channel. Take care.